Hi and welcome to another quick tip. Today we're gonna be looking how I did this letter E for the 46, 46 days of type. So most of this uh, technique, uh, let's call it like that, it's based on X particles. So before we start, I just want to point out that I'm using R21 in sin 4 d and my X particles is an older version. So a few things have changed, So, but you should be able to follow along. Now, let's start by adding an X particle system. And we have one. And if I play it, we have this coming along. And just um, very quickly, what's the, um, the technique or the what we're going to use that makes that shape is in the Nymex tab, XP flow fields. Now, once we have this, and let's crank this and have it random, you start seeing that uh, it's changing how our particles behave. Now, in part of this uh, flow, we also have a long spline or two splines. So this is what we'll be going to use to create our shape. So to start off, um, we will start by drawing the letter E. Uh, in this case, I already have it here, beautifully drawn. Um, the way that it was done, just hide this for now. I just uh, went here, sketch, and I draw a lovely E. So this is the one that I used on the final image. Now that we have our image, let's go to the emitter and let's change a few settings. First, let's start by changing from right angle to Toros, and we can pretty much keep everything the same uh, that is here. What we want to change is instead of rate, we want to have shot. We just wanted to shot a few particles and let's give it uh, two frames. Duration can be one. And if we just play, it's looking good, but I think I'm going to reduce this as I know I'm going to be using splines. Yeah, for now, that is good. And everything else is pretty much the same. But here on speed, I'm going to reduce it. Let's say 85, but I also wanted to have some variation. So I'm going to give it exactly the same value. Now they're starting off at different times and speeds. And also here on the radius, let's have a bit bigger and variation as well. And let's go to this field, uh, the random one that we had previously. And I'm just going to again, I'm just going to change a few settings. So I'm going to up the cell size. Um, and I'm also going to change the actual size of the box. Uh, we can come here and click on it here. I'm just going to add the values I had previously. So that's going to be 1300, 150, and 750. Right, we keep random direction. The strength, I don't want to assume large, so I'll do 74. <coughs> and here on the display, I'm actually going to just put line for now and tone it down even a bit more. So I think that's pretty good. Now that we have our random one, just again, just play it, just moving our particles a bit so they're not just in one way, we're going to add that. Uh, letter E. So I'm going to actually duplicate this. For now, I'm actually going to add the arrows on this. And here, instead of random, let's put a long spline. We'll add this letter E to it. I'm actually going to, in this case, reduce this quite a lot. So you see here, it's much more defined. And instead of direction, I want to change velocity. And the fall off here, it's pretty much the fall off from that spline. So if I add it a bit more, you can see it's changing over here. So let me hide this for a second. And you can see it's now trying to follow that spline. But for us to see this better, let's also go here, XP trail, and let's make sure that our emitter is here. Let's go back. Go. 
So first and foremost, um, since we're getting the setup there, I want to change where the emitter is. So for doing that, I'm actually going to align it to our letter. I'm going to align it to the letter. So in this way, <coughs> this way now, um, I can position um, where I want it. It could be at the beginning. Uh, it could be somewhere over here. I know that later on I'm going to be adding more. I know I want to add more because it doesn't uh, fill up the whole uh, letter. So I'm sh I'm letting it be here on this um, 70%. And I'm going to duplicate our emitter uh, two times. And one of them is going to go all the way there to zero. Oops, this one here. And this one uh, is going to be 40. Okay. Now that we have this, I will change a bit of the settings on each one of them. Um, let's do this one is fine. Uh, we can have it as a torus. I'll just kind of change um, the emission. I'll keep the same uh, short time, but I'm actually going to reduce a bit of the count. And I'll keep it the, the same here. And for this one, I'm actually going to change it to a sphere. Also go and change the, um, the settings over here on emission. And I'm going to change a bit the speed. And this time, let's actually have it for longer, but less of it. Right, let's play. Okay, let's now duplicate the trail as well. And if I play, we start seeing them. So one of the things um, that we're going to do, it's uh, first we'll rename this so we know which one is what. So this is right there. Line. I'm going to for now just duplicate this random one. I'm going to hide the first one and I'm actually going to let's put this here. We can see. I'm actually going to reduce the cell size, maybe 30. So it's starting to get more on that curl feeling. And we can add the other one now. So a lot of this uh, technique is really exploring uh, these settings, um, how they um, everything can be a detail, like the cell size and everything can change a lot. I'm going to keep it as is, but one thing you need to keep in mind is that if you move these things around, um, let's do this. Uh, it changes um, which one affects it first. So you can play around and just find what works for you best uh, in terms of getting that um, splines. Also for the, you can also, for each one of them, you can give, for example, a fall off. So you can put a sphere and it would only affect in a specific um, uh, point. Um, and this can control a bit how far they go and things like that. So like I said, a lot of this is part of uh, where things are and what's their um, order, but also remember you have here how much um, each one is the strength and on the spine, let's crank it up as well to 100. As you see here now, we're starting to get much better that shape of the E. So once you're happy with uh, your settings and, and uh, where things are looking at, we're gonna duplicate, um, you can keep it like this as an animation. Uh, in my case, I ended up duplicating uh, these XP trails. I just uh, dragged and dropped them and clicked on C to make them editable. This way I can, because it was a steel, I can just focus on this. So now I can uh, go back and forth and I still have my splines. And as you see, I have each one of the setups that we can use. So once you're happy with your splines, let me just <coughs> group this. The technique part. Here is my uh, splines from the project once I was happy with the, the look of it. And the way we're going to continue forward is we're going to go into volume. Let's add this too. 
And on volume builder, we're gonna add this trellis here. Let's start by changing the size of the voxel. I'm adding it 3.8. And let's change each one of this uh, for trail. Uh, I'm gonna add the same value to each all of them. So 0.7 and density, I'm gonna put uh, 25. So let's do the same here. So now we have this, I can actually uh, for us to see better at it here. So this can be what we're looking for, um, but I wanted um, to play a bit with uh, the shape. I want it to be more liquidish like, so I wanted to smooth this out. Once I do that, you see it um, takes a lot out. Uh, so I'm actually going to change to this version and we're going to increment the iterations. Uh, so now it's giving me that more liquid vibe switch, which was what I was looking for. So now that I'm happy with this, I'm actually going to go into each the trails. I'm going to keep them and I'm going to go into redshift, redshift object and on curve for now let's put cylinders and let's see how it looks. <coughs> right, it's a bit thin, so let me do 2.5. Yeah, it's a bit better now. So part of the, the setup, um, part of the technique is here. Um, this is um, the essence of it. I did add on top some mega scans flowers, so we can start by adding that uh, and we'll go into then lighting and shading. I went on mega scans and I've downloaded uh, these ones here. Uh, once you download them, you can export it. Make sure you have Scene 3 open with Redshift and it will import your um, this object with its textures. And now that you're back here in Scene 4 if I just go to this mega scan, you see it's how it's imported. The only thing I did change was I added a color correct. Uh, you see, it, I just changed the UN saturation, give it a bit more uh, orange look. And I did the same for the diffuse color and the translucent color. All right, with the assets, let's copy it and let me paste it into our scene. So first, let me actually add the cloner. Yeah, let's track the null object. The mode is object. And instead of adding it to the actual geometry, uh, I added my mind to add it to the trails. So let's add one of the trails. And I'll keep everything on default. And let's duplicate the cloner and add it to the another trail. There we go. Now we don't see anything because this is not in the same uh, folder. So let me just uh, go into the latest file and add the cloners here. And now you see we start to see the plants. I didn't change any random randomized values or anything because I just wanted to get detail into the letter and this was it. As it was, it was enough. So now that we have our geometry, uh, let's start by lighting it. First, I'll go into a dome light, but not too light per se, but to actually just create the background for us. I'm going with an off-white color. I'm removing the exposure because I don't want it to affect that much our letter. And I'm also actually taking a bit out of the contribution of the diffuse. Again, mainly just to have it as a background. Then I'm actually going to add another dome light, and this time I'm actually going to import an HDRI. I selected this one, Materials 2K. It is a bit dark in some areas, so I'm actually just going to up the bit the exposure. Okay, looking much better. And now we can start playing with our materials, as I'm quite happy at the moment as it's looking. So for the first material, I want it to be glass. So once I add it to the volume measure, we can go in and adjust a few of the settings. So we'll start with the preset, and I'm just going to change a few things. For example, the I, fi I find it to be very reflective, so I'm going to change the value to 0 0.35 and the roughness as well up a bit. I'll keep uh, most of the things pretty much the same, but as usual, I'm just going to add some dispersion. Let's go for a value of uh, 0 
I think that's looking good for now, so let's let's stay like this. And let's create a material for the splines. So we'll just add a new material. I'll drag and drop to all of those other trails. And once inside, we're just gonna change the color again to off-white. I want it to be similar to our background color. I don't want any reflection. And I'm gonna amp a bit the roughness on our diffuse. And I'll just add a little bit of coating to it. Great. So let me go into the final image so we can see what we're having on the final scene. As we see here, um, the main difference I have is I do have two area lights. The dome lights, uh, I have now the background ticked off, so we get that background color. And the area lights are just adding a bit of highlights into the flowers. I also added a small sphere with the same glass material and a bigger one in the center of the E to bring a bit of that dispersion. So let's now render and see how the whole thing looks. And here we go. It's looking pretty good. So we'll just add, I'll just render it out and do some little comp on top of it. Excited to see what you come up with this technique. And thank you for watching the tutorial.